aren't part of the job, are they? Amen. No. Amen. <laughs> she wouldn't even listen. Praise your Lord. <laughs> Just kidding. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for the word tonight? Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms. We're going to read Psalm 107, verse 29. this morning, and I thought, I am going to bring me a hat. And he said, what, what, what for? Whenever you get to preaching, and the sweat and hair gel is running in your eyes, <laughs> and then your eyes begin to burn, and you're just like this, because your eyes are on fire, you'd be real thankful for a hat. <laughs> Let me get Psalm 107, 29. If you're there, shout Jesus. Yes. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How many of you need Jesus tonight? Amen. 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 How many of you are going through a storm right now? Amen. 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 That's okay. We go through storms. If you're not going through a storm, you know they're coming. Amen. Hello, they, they're coming, aren't they? They, they? All the time, huh, Sister Shauna? They, you know, but sometimes we go... We go through seasons of storm, sometimes seasons of sunshine, but God is the same regardless. Amen? Amen. Amen. So on 107, 29, He makes the storm a calm. Oh, praise the Lord for that. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> So that the waves that are us, with the help of the Holy Spirit tonight, I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of different storms, different reasons. Different storms, different reasons. I'm going to ask if Sister Mary would pray over this word tonight. Father God, we're so thankful, Lord, for your presence that we feel already, Lord. And God, I ask tonight, Lord, that you would pray for the word, my God. Lord, that it would fall on you. Lord, I pray, my God, that you would move mightily in our lives, Father God, and Lord, that you would comprehend what is coming forth from yes. the pulpit, Father. And Lord, I come against any distractions, anything that would try to yes. disrupt the service. Yes. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus, yes. Lord. Your word will go forth with power and with might, Father oh, God. Oh, and I pray right now, my God, that you would move upon your people, Lord. And God, that we would take this word, apply it, my God, nourish it. Lord, in the spiritual realm, Father yes. God, and I pray, Lord, that you would move mightily through this word in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Mary. Hallelujah. Different storms, different reasons. I've been serving God now since I was eight years old. And now at 33, I can tell you that God's mercy and his goodness have followed me all the days of my life. It's followed me on my good days. It's even followed me on my bad days. Have you ever had a bad day before? God's goodness and God's mercy has followed me when I was on top of the mountain. And it's followed me down in the valley like my brother was singing about tonight. God's been with me in the sunshine. He's been with me throughout the storms of this life, but he's never left me. He's never forsaken me, and I got news for you. He's never going to leave you. Amen. He's sure never going to forsake you. I've been through a lot of storms just like you have, but not one storm have you and I ever endured been without a divine purpose from God. God doesn't allow storms just to amuse himself. God doesn't send storms our way just to try to change things up for you and I every now and then. But every storm has a divine purpose. Some storms are sent to correct us. Some storms are sent to perfect us. Some storms are sent to direct us, but every storm 
has a purpose. And tonight I just want to talk about the, the different purposes of different storms. Amen. Different storms, different reasons. Amen. Number one, I want to talk about storms of correction. Amen. Storms of correction. I'm reminded in the Bible of a man by the name of Jonah. And how many know Jonah in the Bible? Amen. If not, you need to go to Sunday school. Amen. But uh, I'm reminded of a man in the Bible by the name of Jonah. And I love Jonah because he kind of reminds me of uh, Peter, like in the New Testament. You know, Jonah, he loved God. Jonah loved the people of God. Jonah was even a preacher. But Jonah got off track and God had to send a storm of correction his way. After God told Jonah to go and preach in Nineveh, Jonah decided to head the opposite direction. Now before we go ahead and crucify Jonah here, I want to let you know what Nineveh was like. Nineveh was such a wicked city that the Ninevites would get people and they would uh, they would or, uh, they would get the people and they would skin them alive. They would get their skin, their flesh, and nail it to the walls of the city to let any intruder know if you try to come in here with your gospel, if you try to come in here with your religion, you try to come in here with any other motive than to be like us, this is going to be the end result. And Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh, so he went the opposite direction towards the land of Tarsus. Amen. How many of you have ever gone the opposite direction of where God told you to go? Amen. God maybe said go apologize to that person, but you have headed the opposite direction. God said, reach out to that individual, but you headed the opposite direction. God says, get down to that altar, but instead you head out the back door, go in the opposite direction. I want to warn you that whenever you run from the call and the things of God in your life, that you will actually run into a storm of correction. While Jonah thought that he was running from trouble, in Nineveh, he was actually running into a storm of correction. And when Jonah got in that boat, he thought everything was going to be all right. But a storm was of a, was right ahead of him. And as Jonah set sail, suddenly that storm of correction came his way. It was so bad of a storm that the other men on the boat realized that somebody on here made God mad. Jonah was then taken. I'm just giving you a little overview here. Jonah was taken thrown off that boat and swallowed by a whale. For three days and three nights no Jonah lived in the belly of that whale while he was going through a storm of correction. God was saying unto Jonah, Jonah don't run from me. Don't go against my will. Don't ignore the calling of God that I have placed upon your life. Whenever you and I get to a place where we choose to rebel against God and disobey every way that is in His Word, we can expect a storm of correction to come our way. It's not that God is mad at us. It's not that God is trying to get even with us. But Proverbs 3 and 12 tells us that whom the Lord loves, He chastens. Who God loves, He spanks. Hallelujah. Are you running from the will of God? Are you a backslider running from the call of God? If so, if so, I want to warn you, there is a storm of correction that awaits you outside of these doors. You don't have to face that storm of correction, though. You've got time right now to get it right with God. What is holding you back? Is it your pride? Oh, is it your ignorance? Whatever it is, it is not worth you getting things right with God right here, right now. Can you say amen? Storms of, of correction. Oh yeah, I've endured plenty of storms of correction. Amen. Number two tonight, I want to talk to you about storms of perfection. Storms of perfection. This is one of the most common types of storms for Christians. Storms of perfection. I'm sorry, but there's nobody perfect in here except for me. Amen. 
nobody perfect in here <laughs> except for me. Well, that is what I told my mother-in-law once. Amen. I told you that. She was in a mood and she said, well, there ain't nobody perfect. I said, well, I'm the closest thing to it. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> then I ran into a storm of <laughs> perfection and correction. Hallelujah. The correction was from my wife, though. <laughs> Amen. Oh, but we've all gone through storms of perfection before, haven't we? Last week I talked about whenever the disciples went through a storm and Jesus said to the disciples, let us pass over unto the other side. Jesus told the disciples, we all going to cross over to the other side. But whenever the storm came, we find the disciples saying, Lord, do you not care that we perish? Although the disciples had been given a divine word from Jesus himself, Jesus allowed that storm to come their way in order to perfect their faith. Amen. Jesus knew that my disciples still have some doubt. They still have some unbelief. They still have some spiritual immaturity. So Jesus allowed a storm of perfection to come their way. Have you ever had a storm of perfection come your way? Maybe you started thinking you were high on a higher spiritual level than everybody else. But then God had to send a storm your way to humble you in his eyes. Maybe you got spiritually lazy to where you thought, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to pray. I don't need to fast. I don't need to give. I don't need to witness. I don't need to do any type of outreach. Oh, you thought, well, I've just arrived on such a higher level than everybody else. But then God sends a storm of perfection your way to where you realize, I can't make it without prayer. I can't make it without the word of God. I can't make it without worship. I can't make it without praise. I'm talking about storms of perfection. Storms of perfection have a way of molding you and I and shaping us and forming us into who God has called us to be. Thank God for storms of perfection. Amen. Storms of perfection. Number three tonight, there's four storms altogether. Number three, I want to talk to you about storms of protection. Storms of protection. I'm reminded of Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah was a friend of God. Genesis 6 and 8 says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah went through a storm. And it was a storm of protection. The storm God sent in Noah's day drowned out all the sin and carnality that surrounded Noah. Not only did God protect Noah in the boat, but he protected Noah from everything outside of that boat. This storm of, perfect, of protection lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Have you ever went to start your car and it didn't start? Hello. I'm preaching to anybody tonight. Amen. You go outside to start your car and you don't hear nothing turn. Or maybe you hear you get underneath there and you start banging on that starter with a screwdriver or a pipe. Or nothing happens. And your first thought is not, oh, praise God, my car won't start today. Hello. You ain't like Rick singing, ha, 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 My car won't start, my car won't start, my car won't start. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying, Lord, I ain't got the money or the time for this right now. Amen. Amen. Have you been there before? Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If not, you ain't alive. Amen. But what if God had that car not start? at just the right time because he was protecting you from an accident that you didn't even know about. Hello? I'm talking about a storm of protection. Maybe you turn the TV on, but the TV doesn't turn on. I hate when that happens. I'll tell you that. I hate whenever the remote gets lost 
in my house. That's like the unpardonable sin. <laughs> I cannot stand whenever somebody loses my remote. Oh, but maybe you try to turn your TV on and the TV won't turn on. And you say, oh man, I'm going to miss Gomer Pyle. I'm going to miss Andy Gray. I'm going to miss Bonanza. What am I going to do with my night? Hallelujah. Oh, but I'm telling you, I believe sometimes, I'm not saying this is the case with everything that goes wrong. you got to understand that. But I wonder if sometimes God says, I'm going to make your car not start to keep you from an accident. I'm going to keep your TV off to keep your eyes from seeing filth and immorality. I'm going to shut down this thing and that thing to get you from being carnally minded all the time. I'm talking about storms of protection. Those storms are annoying to go through. Those storms are difficult to go through. But at the same time, God may just be doing everything possible to keep you protected. Yeah. Yeah. To keep you protected. I'm reminded of whenever we went to church a couple years ago on Baker Street. And as soon as Miranda and I pulled up, I mean, the time had changed. And we just like, man, it's dark out here tonight. We realize there's no porch lights on. The store's lights are off. And I realize the power over here has been shut off. They always shut the power on the east side off. I mean, they do. It seems like every time I'm on Facebook, everybody on the east side is like, they shut my power off again. I'm like, they never do that to us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Oh, but I'm reminded of whenever we showed up to the church on Baker Street and the power was out. And I thought to myself, this is awful. We can't have church without the lights and, and in the dark out here on Baker Street. But I've often thought to myself, maybe God knew that somebody had plans to rob us that night. Amen. Maybe God knew somebody had plans to do us harm that night. Amen. I'm talking about storms of protection. Yes, they are annoying, but it may just be God's way of divinely protecting us. I'll tell you, I'm glad Tommy's here tonight. Y'all see this new ceiling right here? We didn't put this on because we wanted to. Jay told that guy right there, Tommy, to go in the attic to do something, to undo a bolt. And Brother Jay said, Tommy, make sure you step on the beams. Okay. <laughs> Tommy's walking around. <laughs> right through the tile. And I remember Jay was so mad. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thought, I'm glad I'm not Tommy right now. Praise the Lord. Brother Jay, though, he goes up there. He's mad. He's frustrated. And Jay is looking around and he sees all this loose wiring. And Brother Jay said, you know what? If Tommy hadn't stepped through this ceiling, I wouldn't have come up here and saw the fire hazard that could have taken place. Am I making an excuse for Tommy? Not at all. <laughs> but I'm saying that sometimes God sends storms of protection. Yes. Recently, Sister Ashley posted on Facebook, my dryer went out. <laughs> Have you ever had a dryer go out on you? That's not fun, is it? Amen. You may you think, well, I'll just hang them out on the line. And then you put your shirt on and it's like, who put sandpaper in my shirt? <laughs> Oh, yeah, but Sister Ashley had a dryer go out. I don't know. Maybe God knew that thing could catch on fire. You, you never know. Amen. We don't know, church. But I believe that one day, whenever we get to heaven, God's going to reveal all these times that he sent storms of protection our way. And we're going to say, oh, Jesus. I was so upset whenever that happened. But oh God, now I see that your goodness and mercy was still following me. Can we just lift up our hands to the Lord tonight and say thank you Jesus for every single storm of protection. Oh praise the Lord. Number four tonight, this is the last storm I want to talk about. I want to talk about storms of direction. Storms of direction. Have you ever gone through a storm of direction before? Talk about a storm that leads you right into the will of God. Amen. Years ago, Ren and I applied for a church in Lake Isabella. 
we were willing to sell our home to go to this little church in Lake Isabella with not but just a handful of members at that time. But we were willing to just give away everything that we had to move over there to pasture those people. Our hearts were right, but it just wasn't the will of God. Amen. And I remember whenever they told us, they said, Brother William, we're sorry, but you're too young to pastor. And they said that, and besides that, that church is not able to support a pastor financially. That was a storm for us. We wanted to pastor. We wanted to fulfill the will of God that he's placed up in our, in our lives. But that was a storm of direction. So you know what we did? We continued to pray. And about two weeks later, we were driving down Baker Street and we started the church on Baker Street. Amen. It was a storm of direction. God was saying, it's not my will that you be up in that mountain. It's my will that you be in the ghetto of Bakersfield. You go over there and start a church. You go over there and I'm going to lay the foundation for what I'm going to do later. Yes. A storm of direction. And as we were over on Baker Street... Another church here in town came open. And I thought, surely this is what God's plan is for our church. Maybe some of you know what I'm talking about. Facility open in need of a pastor. In the east side. We on the east side. Me and Miranda thought, you, that's what God's going to do. Surely God's going to do that. Sure, our church would have had to merge. But hey, when you can go from a storefront building to have your own building, you ain't going to complain too much. Amen. We thought, sure, this is the will of God. People would call me, hey, did you know that this church is open? We thought about you. And I think, that's what I'm thinking too. But then you know what happened to that door? It slammed shut. It seems like every time me and Miranda have depended on another church to help us, the door has slammed shut in our face. So that door slammed shut. And I get to church on a Wednesday night on Baker Street. I've got feces wiped on the walls. I've got homeless people sleeping on the steps of the church. And I'm thinking, Lord, we're the people in need of a building. And yet here we are out in the middle of Baker Street. When there was an opportunity available. What are you doing God? Uh -huh. I mean no God knows best. Yes, Hello? Yes, two weeks later. It's amazing how God just kind of two weeks later. That's, that's the way his timing is with us. Whenever one door closes you just wait for two weeks. Alright. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh yeah. That door closed. And we were heartbroken. Oh we grieved. We say, you know, we just got to keep on going. We say, you know what? As long as we're here on Baker Street, we are going to love this church. We're going to love this community. We put about five or six thousand dollars into the flooring, and then a couple weeks later, hey, there's a church on Roberts Lane that we can that is available. We come over here and we look at the building, and and the guy says, you know what? It'll be a thousand bucks a month. I thought that's cheaper than what we paying on Baker Street, praise the Lord. But this thing needed a lot of work. You know what I said at first? I said, nah, I ain't willing to do it. And Miranda, she looked at me and said, honey, you're crazy. <laughs> she said, you don't know what the will of God is. Amen. Oh, but I'm telling you, she was right. How do you think for your wives every now and then? Praise the Lord. Oh, she was right. Amen. Oh, and sure enough, we moved over here and God's blessing has been upon us. But I'm telling you what, God knew it wouldn't have been good for our church at that time to go ahead and merge with other people. God knew the direction in which this church is going.
Lord, why did I get fired? Hello? Have you ever thought that before? Me and Melrose the only one willing to admit we got fired before. <laughs> one time I got fired from McDonald's. Oh, no, 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 no. I quit McDonald's. They wanted to fire me, though. <laughs> <That's for sure. laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. One, one time, whenever I was about 18 years old, I worked for McDonald's. Oh, no, 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 no. That was in high school. 18 years old, I worked for Cope's Food Fair on Norris Road. I remember Cope's. Then I worked for uh, Hall Masonry. I lasted there a day and a half. That work was too hard for me. <laughs> oh, and then I went to work for Keebler Cookies. Amen. No, I was not the elf. <laughs> I just put the cookies on the shelf. But I had three jobs in one week. Amen. Crazy. Amen. Storms of direction. Amen. Oh, but maybe you get fired and you think, this is terrible. But then only for God to open up the perfect job for you. Hello. Amen. Oh, Lord. Why didn't this relationship work out? Maybe God knew that's not my will for your life. Hello. Thank God for storms of direction. I know it hurts. Lord, why didn't this work out? Why didn't that work out? But God is saying, if I don't send this storm, you'll never be in my will. Storms of direction. Lord, why did my engine blow up? <laughs> Amen. Have you ever had an engine blow up? I did. Four? Who said four? My goodness. I'm, all right. Hey, man, y'all need some better luck or something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm almost closing now. About a year ago, I take my truck down the road to Hudson Automotive. Uh, Vince down the road. And I said, Vince, for some reason, my truck is making some noise. Every time I start it. Like, like there's a mouse in my engine knocking, trying to get out, you know. And Vince said, William, I'm sorry, dude, but you need a new motor. It's okay, all right. How much is that going to be? Uh, labor and everything. He said, you look about five grand. Oh, my goodness. Truck's got 200,000 miles on it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I need a new motor? But you know what I did? I went out and got a new truck. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you, I love that new truck. <laughs> Man, yeah, i got to make a payment on it, but uh, at least I can enjoy when I'm going to my lawns. Amen. Sometimes God sends storms our way in order to get us into the perfect will of God. Can you stand tonight? Sister Dolores, why don't you come to the piano, sis? Y'all getting two different styles of preaching tonight or today.